Good morning, everybody. Uh, just wanted to come on and talk about the clay court season and wanted to lead off with uh, Daniel Medvedev. He, he lost again yesterday and uh, lost to Karatsev, who uh, I think he actually called Karatsev uh, in a friendly way, you know, like his, his secret weapon. They were playing a, a kind of a team kind of thing. And he knew Karatsev, how good he was. But, uh, but Medvedev clearly not good on clay. And uh, it, it's kind of a little perplexing to me when you just think about his game in general, you know, without really watching him play on clay. If you just think about the way he plays, he can be very much like Djokovic, in my opinion, to where he goes in the lockdown mode, doesn't miss a ball. He can cover a lot of court. He's extremely consistent, extremely patient, has good touch. I mean, when you think about it on the surface, now he doesn't hit a big heavy ball like Rafa, but when you think about surface, he should be decent on clay. Like he shouldn't just totally suck, but but he does, and he and he's the first one to admit it. He hates playing on clay. And so I just wanted to come on your opinion on why do you think Medvedev uh, stinks on clay. So whether you're watching this uh, live or you're watching replay, please comment and share your thoughts on why you think he has such trouble on clay. I did want to uh, share my screen here and uh, to show – let me just come here, share my screen. <laughs> I just saw a very, very funny clip. It'd be interesting to see if it plays well for you guys. But uh, here's Medvedev. I want to show you two things. First of all, this is here him on one of the changeovers where he's literally saying, I don't want to be here. I hate clay. So it's going to hide this. So so watch this right here. This is just any, and this is one of the few matches that actually won on clay. Happy Medvedev. I don't want to play here on this side. Well, clear what he's thinking. I don't want to play here on the surface. He 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 hates it, and then uh, and he just continues to lose his temper. I mean, this is one thing about Medvedev that's really weird. He can be so mentally tough, and then so fragile. Just really have like almost uh, childlike temper tantrums, kind of like uh, I guess Curios. You could compare him to Curios, but Curios. We wouldn't really consider mentally tough, uh, where Medvedev, I would think he'd be somebody who could eventually win a Grand Slam title. I think he's got, at times, the mental toughness to do it, the physicality, the the game to frustrate people for two weeks. Uh, so I think he could do it, almost did in Australia this year. But then when you see this, you're like, maybe he can. I don't know. He seems crazy. So watch this. You can read it if you can't hear it. <laughs> so his argument is because the, the uh, umpire there, we're going to stop sharing the screen. His, his argument is, hey, I can't damage a clay court like it's already a bad court. There is no damaging a bad court if you're already playing on a bad court. Basically just saying that clay sucks, you know. So if he throws his racket on it, puts divots in the court, you know, it all, the court already gets bad bounces. He can't slide on it like he wants to. It's just a piece of crap, you know, and and uh, and this is the way he feels about it. This is the way he feels about it. And and so uh, Sandy says he hits the ball f too flat for Clay. I don't know if you can say he hits the ball too. Look how flat um, David Ferrer hit the ball. And he he was a good clay court player. Uh, and and he's very he's consistent enough. Uh, I think to win to win on clay. I don't think it's his shots. I, I of, of course, you know, more traditional Borg, Nadal, the big heavy spin, uh, Velas. I get that. 
But I think that his consistency and the way he hits the ball is is not the problem. I I, I don't think so. Uh, but but maybe maybe it's too flat. That that could be something. I'm just going to take one more uh, quote here from Medvedev on Reddit that I thought was pretty interesting. Just want to make sure I'm sharing the screen. Yeah. So here's another one just to really give you his thought process. I don't know if you guys can see this. He goes, what can I do, man? The surface is awful. You like to be on the dirt like a dog? I don't judge. <laughs> like he's basically like, almost like trying to turn the tables and say, hey, if you like clay, you're an idiot. It's a stupid surface. So um, where I'm going with this is, is I think that it's, it's two main things. I don't think it's a serve. I don't think it's his ground strokes. I don't think it's a shot making that isn't conducive to play great tennis on clay. I think it's his movement, number one. If you watch him play, even when he slides, he's like sliding after he hits the ball. And, and lots of times on shots, I know a lot of pros who are comfortable on clay, they would slide into the shot. Lots of times he doesn't even slide. He just does the foot, just like normal tennis footwork and then tries to hustle back to the middle. And so he's not able to flow, and he knows that. When you see your opponents out there moving on a court like they're ice skating, you know, in a good way, you know, like they're in control, they, they, they know how to use the surface to their advantage and just be gliding out there. Uh, and, and then you're basically feeling like you're stuck in the mud and, and you, you just can never get your bearings. It, it's got to really... Uh, as an elite athlete playing at that level, it's got to really mess with your head, feeling like there's you're you're a loser almost. You know, I think I think that's I think he's going through the same thing that Lendl went through on grass at Wimbledon. Where remember Lendl for many years being the best player in the world or number two in the world, and he's one two in the world. He would skip Wimbledon. He'd be like, I'm not going to play on Wimbledon. I'm allergic to grass. He actually said, allergic to grass. And then he could be found on a golf course. We all know he loved golf. He loved golf, some would say, at points in his career more than he loved tennis. So he obviously wasn't allergic to grass. He just did not feel comfortable on the surface. And back then, grass was so fast that it was really thought the only way you could win on a grass court tournament, the only way you could win Wimbledon was to serve and volley. And obviously, Lendl did not like to serve and volley. Uh, perhaps he does not have the stamina and the patience to play long points on clay. I don't think, I mean, he plays lots of long points, guys. That's his MO. He goes, if you watch him play in the hard court, he plays lots of hard points. He exhausts people. He totally frustrated Sissy Poss uh, at, at Australian Open. And, uh, and that's what he's known for, is grinding it out, exhausting you, uh, wearing you down, being consistent, covering the court, I just watched uh, uh, people uh, explain. Uh, I watched a video. Explain Medvedev in one word. And uh, let's see. It was um, – what's this guy's name? Oh, I can't think of his name. I'm really mad at myself because I can't think of his name. Uh, I think it's uh, – forget his name, guys. I'm sorry. A Russian player. He called him an octopus. He called him an – Karen Kachanov. Karen Kachanov called him an octopus. That's how he explained him. Then the next player up, Zarev called him a spider. What does that mean? Like court coverage. Like you, he's got, he's long. He just gets to everything. Octopus, you know it, right? He called him an octopus. And so, yeah, I really think it's, I think it's two things. I think it's the movement. I think it's all the movement actually. And then secondary, because he knows he can't move on the clay. He then starts to get in a negative head headset and basically doesn't even give himself a chance mentally. He just basically tells himself he sucks on clay. He starts to pacify himself by saying clay is a stupid surface. I only have to play on it two months out of the year. Uh, why are we have to do this? It's dumb. The court is damaged. You know, if you want to be like a dog and get dirty, play on clay. So he starts to make himself feel better. He justifies the fact that he can't play on clay 
with things like that. And so how are you going to go out there and play people who want to win? They want to win the tournament. They think they can win the tournament. And this is how you're feeling about it. But I think if you were to put things in order, I think it's the movement, number one, and then that puts him in a bad headspace because the opposite is true on a hard court. He knows he can move so good. He knows he can cover such such amazing territory in real estate. He can be way back by the fence. Then he can go run and get a drop shot. Then he can go chase down a lob. He knows he can do all that. And, and so he feels much better on a hard court. He, he likes that. So the question then becomes, does he have the mental toughness, not in the matches? It's not going to happen in the matches. It's going to have to happen on the practice court. Does he have to, the mental toughness, the willingness, the time to put on to build the confidence to be able to move well on clay, to become a sufficient mover, to be able to not just slide after you hit the ball, but to slide long into a shot effortlessly and then hit and then get back and flow? Will he ever do that? That's what it's going to take because Lendl – I want I want to I want to compare this directly to Lendl, even though we're talking about completely different surfaces. You know, Lendl felt the same exact way about grass, and so Lendl had a decision. He could keep saying he's allergic to grass. He could keep saying that he sucks on grass. Uh, he could keep saying, you know, all these things about grass and that his game's not suited for grass. He's allergic. You get the point. But what he decided to do is one year he decided, I'm going to improve my volley so much that I can be good at serving volley, that I can be a good serving volleyer. Even though I have one of the best ground strokes games in the world and no one thinks of me as a serving volleyer, I'm going to become a serving volleyer and be pretty damn good at it. And he got to the finals. I think it was like 1986 or 87. He got to the finals. I think he lost to Pat Cash, one of the best serving volleyers ever. But think about the mental fortitude it took Lendl to do that, you know, skipping the tournament all out, out, just skipping grass, saying screw it, to getting so focused, working so hard where he became obsessed. He became his obsession was I'm going to win Wimbledon if it kills me. Now, he never won it, but he got to the finals. I think he might have even got to the finals twice. Uh, you guys can correct me on that if I'm wrong. But I think he went from a guy saying, I'm allergic to getting to the finals twice to serving and volleying. You know, Agassi, I think they slowed the surface down and then Agassi uh, changed changed the game again by winning, staying back. And then all of a sudden, the other baseliners goes, whoa, you could actually win by staying back. But until then, Lendl totally bought in. He's like, I've got to become a serving volleyer. And therefore, if I can do that, then I can be good on grass. And all of a sudden, I'm not allergic to grass. Medvedev has got to take that that page out of Lendl's playbook and go, I've got to become, I, I can't do be a baby my whole entire career. He's a young guy. He's got plenty of years left. If you, you know, like to just skip a grand slam and not give yourself a chance, you know, is he gonna win Wimbledon? I don't know. Is he good enough on grass to win Wimbledon? So then you're basically just saying, my only chance is to win a grand slam or on uh, Australian Open and US Open, you know. You don't want to do that. You want to open up your mind space to give yourself a chance on all surfaces. He could, I think he could win on clay, uh, especially, you know, once Nadal leaves and Nadal is having a tougher and tougher time. In fact, we're going to check in on his score in a second. I know he's in trouble today with Shapoval. 88 and 87, Lendl got to the finals. See that, guys? So I do believe that Medvedev can be a good clay court player. I don't think it's that he hit the hits the ball too flat. I don't think that it's he's not in good enough shape. I mean, his serve's good enough. His ground strokes are good enough. His speed is good enough. He's fast enough. It's not like he's a slow guy. It's not like he's not a good mover. I think it really all comes down to he's got to become obsessed with learning how to slide. That's it. The only thing he can't do on clay, let me know if I'm wrong. The only Watch him play. The only thing he cannot do is he cannot slide. I think it's probably my girlfriend calling me. Anyway, I'm going to finish this up, though. The only thing he cannot do is he can't slide. He can't. So he's got to learn how to slide, and he can become great at sliding. He can then get a better 
mental game on the clay, and he can win. Uh, so that's what he's going to have to do. Let me know what you guys think. Can he do this? Why does my phone ring 30 times? Go to voicemail, please. Okay, good. It stopped. Okay, so that's my opinion on Medvedev. I do believe he can do it. He's got to learn how to slide, and then he can change his mindset. But he's got to change his mindset first and work off the court. He's not going to be able to do this mid-match. So he's not going to do great, I don't think. I don't think he'd do great at the French Open this year. If he wins a couple of matches, that'll be amazing. He's literally got to go early into an off season, like as soon as they play their last hard court match, uh, you know, after the Australian Open, then you know we can get normal next year and have Indian Wells. Like as soon as they play Indian Wells, Miami, he's got to go boom. I'm going straight to the clay, and I'm learning how to slide for like a month and a half. And if he can do that, then he can do well. Nadal serving 5-4. So, yeah, so let's talk more. Let's open this up more on the clay court season. And obviously the other big, big story, and it's a much bigger story than Medvedev actually, uh, is Nadal. That's probably the biggest story uh, on the clay court season. It literally looks like he's having trouble. And uh, so let's see. I'm going to go to tennis scores. And the Dow lost the first set to um, Shapovalov. And now he is up 5-4, but he's down love 15. And so uh, I did say when the Dow won Barcelona, he was going to play Sissy Pass in the final. I said, if he lost to Sissy Pass in the final, don't read too much into it. It was a great week. Barcelona was a great week for Nadal. He got his confidence back. You know, he's going to do fine at the French Open and 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 do not count him out. I'm certainly, certainly not counting out Nadal, but um, I'm not feeling as confident in that, um, you know, everybody kind of getting worried about Nadal being much to do about nothing. I do think that now, uh, since he... Lost to Rublev, um, and then he, I think that was Madrid. He lost to Rublev, then he, he he won Barcelona. No, was it Madrid where he lost to Zarev? You know, he loses to Zarev. He lost to Rublev. Where was that? But uh, so he's lost those two matches. He's in trouble here against Shapovalov. Somebody that you wouldn't think on clay uh, would would give him trouble. In, in other years, uh, you got to start being concerned for a Rafa if you're a Rafa fan. Now, he's up 30-15 right now. I'm looking at the score. He's up 30-15, uh, evening the set. You know, if he wins this match, do you then just think, oh, this is a great – this could this if he ends up beating Shapoval, we could go, this, is a, this could be a turning point. This could be a great match where he's, you know, playing a really quality player. He comes through in three sets. He, he builds even more confidence. Like, how concerned are you – for Rafa going into the French, because it looks like, you know, we, we're going to have some real challengers this year. Dominic Thiem is starting to find his confidence on clay, starting to get out of his rut. Uh, Novak Djokovic won his match 6-2, 6-1. Sissi Pass just beat Berrettini. Berrettini, another one, playing very well on on, on clay. Uh, but Sissi Pass is, is so, so strong this year. Rublev showing, uh, you know, playing well on clay. Uh, Karatsev, you know, the Cinderella story of the year is playing well on clay. There's going to be a lot of people. Uh, Nishikori, Zarev, Zarev. I mean, the guy is playing. He likes clay. So he's going to have many, many challengers this year. I think more than normal. Uh you know, usually what we see is like it's Rafa and Nadal. Dominic Thiem has a very, very outside chance to beat him, but probably not give him the trophy. This year is different. Like I, th this year is going to be his toughest test he's had in a long, long time. He's had in a long, long time. Not Rafa Nadal was the king clay, but getting old – one good day, one bad day of tennis, Sandy. So are you saying, so that's interesting. Like, are we taking his title away that fast? Is that really fair? Sandy says Nadal was the king of clay. Does that mean he's not the king of clay? He has, 
He hasn't gone. First of all, let's think about it. This year, he has already won a tournament on clay, right? He's won a tournament on clay. He won the Barcelona. So it's not like he's like not succeeding at all on clay. And uh, within the year, he did, I think they played, what, they play the French Open in October or November. And a lot of people were saying, you know, the way the surface is, it's slower than normal. It's it's just more, uh, the air is thicker. This is not going to be good for Rafa. So a lot of people were kind of saying that, you know, maybe that COVID French Open was going to be his downfall. Now, obviously, he is looks a little more vulnerable. But to just say he's was the king of clay, I don't know if that's fair. I don't know if that's fair. DM had COVID. He's possibly not 100% yet. So I, uh, Daniel Medvedev had COVID. Yes, maybe he's not 100%. But you can see the way he, he always talks bad about clay. I mean, he, he's saying he hates clay. So he's not saying that COVID is affecting his play. He's saying, I suck on clay. I hate it. It's a bad surface. It has bad bounces. You can't slide, uh, which is kind of interesting that a guy is more comfortable sliding on a hard court than a clay court. That, that's, that's crazy, but that's where he is. He's, he, he can slide on a hard court. He can't slide on a clay court. It's pretty weird. Um, you're, normally, you learn how to slide on your clay courts, and then you get so good at sliding that you can even slide on a hard court. If you watch, if you watch him, he cannot slide on a hard court. He can't do it. So, um, I mean, he cannot slide on a clay court. He can't do it. So he's going to have to train on that. Anyway, guys, that's my that's my take on Medvedev. I think it's it's mental and physical. I think it's all about him learning how to slide. I think if he ever can um, dedicate himself to the clay and it becomes important enough to where he's like, I want to win on clay rather than just whine about it and get through it and go to the next uh, season of grass and hard court. Um, if he can get over that and really dedicate himself to learning how to slide, I think he will build up his confidence and he will become a real threat on clay. But until he changes his, he his headspace, he's going to continue to look clumsy out there and, and not get good results. Uh, let's before we leave, let's just take a look at Nadal. He he. Uh, let's see, they're going to the third set. You know, it's going to be really really hard to put your money against Rafa. I'm still uh, I'm certainly Rafa. Please, if you're watching this video, which I know you're not, but if you do watch this video out there, I am not taking the King of Clay title away from you. Um, even if you don't win the French this year, I'm still not I'm still not taking it away from you. You are the king. You will always be the king. Um, even if you never won another match on clay for the rest of your life, you're the king. No one's ever taken that title away from you, buddy. And uh, I'm sure that you are going to be ready to fight your booty off once the French Open starts. And, uh, you know, he's not going to go down without a fight. We know that. It's become more a mental thing. If your opinion is that clay is stupid, it, you, it will not improve. You'll just be looking for things to prove him right. That's right. So, Lars, that's a very good point. All right, guys. Hope everybody's having a great day. And uh, go Rafa. Let's. I'm rooting for Rafa to win the French Open. I'm rooting for Rafa to win the rest of his matches. And uh, that's my that's my guy for the clay court season. I hope he can do it. And we'll see you guys on the next video. If you've never seen me before, my name is Pete from Crunch Time Coaching. I mostly make online instructional videos, but occasionally I come on and talk about what's going on on the tour. Always fun to check in with you guys. Have a great day.